Hey there everybody, this intro is for you, but the one that's about to follow is for Reddit, so give me a second. Hey Reddit, last time we talked you all complained about me using fancy tools to build a metal chiminea just like that one. So let's do it again with none of the fancy tools. <laughs> I'm not gonna use my fancy shop built CNC plasma cutter or a metal cutting circular saw or even my fancy $2,500 welder with all the bells and whistles. Instead, we're gonna be using the HDP MIG 130, 110 volt welder that works with or without gas and costs $450 brand new. Of course, you could always go even cheaper, but you get what you pay for. You'll need a grinder with a cutoff wheel, a grinder with a flap disc, they don't have to be two separate grinders. Hearing protection, eye protection while grinding, eye protection while welding, gloves, appropriate long sleeve fire retardant workwear, and a straight edge about 50 inches long. I'm using a piece of two inch by eighth of an inch flat bar. This whole build comes out of one four foot by four foot sheet of steel in whatever thickness you prefer. I'd suggest 10 gauge, maybe 12 if you wanna save some money. So this is about to be a bunch of details. If you don't want to keep track on the video, I'm going to have free plans available for the week after this video releases on my website, link down in the description. Now along one side of your piece, you're going to need to make a mark alternating every 12 and a half and eight and a half inches. That's going to mean 12 and a half, 21, 33 and a half, and 42. Then spin the piece around 180 degrees. We're going to do the same thing again, except the opposite way around. Skip over two inches to start with. Then make a mark every eight and a half, then 12 and a half inches all the way across. That means two, 10 and a half, 23, 31 and a half, and 44. Next, take your straight edge and connect those lines. Firstly, from the very corner to your two inch mark. Then work your way across, connecting all the other lines, kind of in a zigzag. Now you'll see with your marks, you have one side with just a skinny little wedge and one side with a little bit more space. Rotate that space towards you 90 degrees. We're not gonna do anything with these first three trapezoids. This last one we're gonna work on right now. Measure from that edge up. 14. So this is where using a two inch wide straight edge will come in helpful. Line that right up against the edge of the sheet and make a mark only across this one shape here. Likewise, line it up along the line we made earlier and make a mark about three quarters of the way up. If you don't have a two inch wide straight edge, you can make a mark like I'll do for this next one. For the next mark, we need to move 12 and a half inches up from this one, which means we're at 14 and a half. Make a mark on one side of the sheet at 14 and a half, and then again on the other side of the sheet at 14 and a half. Lay your straight edge between them and make a mark from that parallel line out to the edge of the sheet. If you're using a two inch wide straight edge, move it to the other side of that mark and make another line. If you're not, mark 16 and a half inches on both sides and cross it with your straight edge. The last line we need to make is at 28 inches up. We'll make a mark. Again, you could make one on the other side, or maybe you have a square handy. Line that up to your mark and continue the line across the sheet. If your square is not long enough, match your straight edge to the line and continue it. You certainly don't need to, but for the sake of the video, I am going to erase the lines we're not gonna need. Acetone or fingernail polish remover will take Sharpie marks off of steel. Doing this may help you not accidentally cut the wrong spot later on. So in order to cut this with a grinder, you wanna separate that from your work surface. I'm just using a piece of scrap OSB plywood. Clamp your straight edge along your cut line and have at it with a grinder with a cutoff wheel. Move your straight edge down and just continue for all of the cross lines for this piece.
You're gonna go through some grinder discs too. Maybe buy, buy at least a five pack, probably a 10 pack. If you fail to cut all the way through the metal in one or two spots, it's not a big deal. The existing cut will guide your blade. With those four cuts made across the sheet, slide the whole thing off of your work surface if available to you, otherwise keep going right on the wood. Cutting over air will make your discs last longer than cutting up against something like a piece of wood. Now we're gonna repeat the process to cut these angled lines. Do not cut through these two rectangles that we've left hanging off. With small cuts, once you get most of the way through, you can generally just bend the piece off. That's called fatiguing the metal. Now we're gonna remove these two rectangular pieces. So this is obviously a lot of grinding, cutting, it's messy, it sucks, it's slow. You're gonna go through 20 bucks worth of grinder discs. If you guys don't wanna bother with that, I also sell the parts for these pre-made on my website. There'll be a link down in the description. You help support my shop and you get a project done without having to deal with kind of the crappy parts of it. And we have a bunch of different options. We have a small and large hexagonal fire pit. The one that started the whole thing, a rocket stove. A small version of this chimenea without the wood storage. A big hexagonal chimenea. And a dodecahedron globe fire pit. So now with your three full wedges and one side piece, find the wedge that most closely matches the size of this one. All right, so they're all pretty much the same, which is fortunate I didn't spend the time to stay close to the line. If you get off a little bit, it's okay. We're just gonna use this piece, cut along the edges, just like we did with the straight edge to make it duplicate. Perfect. The last thing we need to do is reduce these two rectangle pieces we saved from earlier to the correct size to fit right here and right here in our side pieces. On the plans, you'll get a measurement. You should confirm that measurement with your actual cut pieces because if you wobbled off your line or used a thicker cut disc, you could run into problems. Now with all of the cutting done, it's time to clean up a little bit. So before moving on to save your fingers, let's take a minute to deburr all these pieces with a grinder that has a flap disc on it. Ugh. Not the day to not be wearing my steel toes. With the parts ready, let's set our welder up. Like I said before, we're we'll be using the HTP MIG 130. It's 450 bucks shipped to your door. HTP is a supporter of the channel, but I actually purchased this welder. Like most 110 volt welders, the dials on the front of it don't tell you what voltage and wire speed you're running at. You need to open up the door and that will tell you what wire speed and voltage, what the two knobs are to set for the material thickness and the type of wire you're working with. In this case, we're using an 030 thickness flux core wire. That means we do not need gas. Your welds are a little dirtier. It's a little harder to weld, not much, but you don't need a gas bottle. So you don't have additional costs there. I'm using 14 gauge steel just cause I had some around and felt like making this video for y'all. So I need to go to 14 gauge we're using gassless 030 wire. 
That means I need to have both of my knobs set at number three. That's convenient. For any other thickness or combination of wire and material, it will show you how to set your knobs up. And that's the manufacturer's recommendation. You can always tweak that a little bit. Now, because I have a metal work table here, I can clip the ground clamp for the welder directly to that and then work off of it as long as what I'm working on stays in contact with the table. If you're working on a wooden surface or the ground, you're gonna to need to clip your ground clamp directly to the pieces you're working on. All right, so with your welding helmet on and gloves ready, the first thing to do are tack together these two solid corners. A tack is just a very small weld. Hold the pieces approximately 90 degrees. We're gonna be able to bend the tack afterward to get it to line up right. So I've placed four tacks down the length of the inside. That's gonna be enough to hold it together while we get on to the next step. That next step is gonna to be to put on one of the side pieces with the openings. If you're having trouble getting things to line up correctly, you can always put one tack at one spot just to hold it together. Tacks are fairly flexible. Next, we need to pay, place the last piece into this opening to complete the square. And one way to do that while having it lay down like this is to use some blue tape across the joint. That will let you adjust the spacing in and out, especially if you leave a little tab so it's easy to grab and reposition the tape. Another alternative is to stand the whole piece up and do it that way. Having a second person will also make this much easier. But I thought I'd take a moment to mention safety. You don't want to be breathing too much of this gas. You know, grind your dust and see I'm not wearing a mask. My shop is super ventilated. There's a 20 by 20 foot door at either end of the building. So much so that I have a wind guard on the microphone on my camera all the time. So safety is a ladder. You decide how high up you want to climb, how many risks you want to take. And when you add more safety gear, you take a step down that ladder. It's a decision you have to make for yourself. So now we have an assembly. It's roughly square. We can spend a bunch of time with a square, getting everything nice and square or we can use these two square plates we cut out earlier. The first goes in the bottom and the second goes in between the wood storage area and the fire area. There you go. As you hammer it into place, it is going to square the whole frame up all by itself. So as you knock these squares into place, don't be worried if there's little gaps around the edge or if they don't go in perfectly flat, you actually want them to be slightly askew and with some gaps so that when rainwater falls into this, it will drain out. Now, with a couple more tacks, this guy's functionally done. You could light a fire in it. Tacks are strong enough to hold it together, but let's go ahead and weld it out. Now, especially when you're just starting out, doing a real long weld like that is probably going to be difficult. Don't worry, it's okay to start and stop. Inside the firebox, I really just want to put about a one inch stitch weld on each corner of each of the four sides, so eight total. I'd like for it to get lots of drainage so rainwater doesn't collect and start to rust. You know, if you don't want to have to get in that weird position, you can always just do these welds from the underside. Now there are a lot of different positions you can do these welds in. There's a lot of different methods. This is not gonna be a technical welding video. I'll have some links in the description to a couple videos I liked from smaller creators that are more intro to welding. Now if your cuts weren't great, or as in my case, my fit up wasn't perfect, you may end up with gaps between the plates that you need to close. In order to do that, try welding like normal. You may wanna turn down the power setting on your welder. I wanna take a minute to thank these folks right here for supporting what I'm doing over on Patreon. Their continued support makes it possible for me to take time out of my schedule and spend money on materials to make a video like this that really isn't something I can sell to a customer, isn't especially monetizable. So thank you. Thank them. Thank y'all. Goodbye. 
If you're having trouble with your welds, don't stress. Like my buddy Adam over at Maker Table says, this is the worst you'll ever be. Just keep practicing, you can only get better. Oh man. All right, the welding is done and uh, it's a lot of it. I call these welding practice kits for a reason. You're gonna get some practice. There's only one thing left to do. Ta-da! All right, let's call it how it really is. Just an excuse to use up my expired fire extinguisher. Alrighty, y'all, thanks for joining me for, we'll call it a low tools build. If you're interested in making one of these, but don't want to go through all the trouble of getting a piece of metal, cutting all the parts out, going through grind this, cleaning up, etc., I will send you the parts to build this one right here, or even this little guy. You got a burn chamber, a little firebox down here. I think it's a pretty fun project. There's a lots of welding there. There's a link right there to it. You can always subscribe. And of course, if you want to see another video, the one that inspired this build, click right here. Until next time, thanks for stopping by.